Congratulations on season one of Harlem. Um, I binge watched the whole entire season. It came out like <laughs> everything. I was laughing <laughs> from ear to ear with your character, all the characters. Um, I love that Angie is like so carefree and she's able to speak her mind. What do you enjoy most playing about her? Oh, wow. Um, what I love most about Angie is that, well, I think every role you learn something about yourself or humanity because hopefully you're, you're able to play into a human being that you've never played before or you don't exactly like um, live their experience. So I learned the greatest lesson with Angie, which was about self-judgment. Mm -hmm. Angie does not allow her circumstances to reflect how she feels about herself, how she thinks what she deserves in this world or how she allows people to treat her. And so much of this industry is, um, you, they say, how are you? But they really mean, what are you doing? And mm -hmm. we equate our value with our jobs or we equate our value with beauty standards or, or financial value. And mm -hmm. to discover this Black woman who was curvy and got to because that I am the vessel playing her, but to see this woman who's sleeping on her friend's couch but still treats herself as if she's the star that she knows she is, whether it's here right now or was gone five years ago. Were there moments in your life that you felt connected to her? Oh, absolutely. I resonated specifically with her being this <laughs> artist who um, does not see what she knows is her purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Because I was an actress who was sleeping on my mom's couch for a couple of years before I booked Angie. Mm -hmm. So I know what it's like to know what your purpose is, to have this dream and be here to pursue this thing and not see it and know what it's like to like have that fear of is it ever going to happen and possibly doubt yourself. I mm -hmm. definitely um, related with the artist's journey that uh, Tracy so beautifully arced with Angie. Because <laughs> that moment I enjoyed the most of your character was doing this scene where she was like trying to apologize to the white co-star and like having that whole segment. Uh, what was it like filming that and you know, when we saw like, okay, she didn't really say it. Do you think Angie, you know, would have said it if she didn't have that, you know, dream of like, okay, well, I have to be in my place. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think Angie, if she hadn't had the talking with her girls, yes, or and just experienced Emmanuel, mm -hmm. who was doing exactly the same thing, this artist living out her living out of his car. I think she would have definitely told him off. Angie, two months ago, would have definitely self-sabotaged, but even not, because it's not self-sabotage to stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. But she would have self-sabotaged any artistic experience because she was so terrified of, of not actually having what she, what she wanted, or mm -hmm. the dream, which is why initially her first response to the show is to say no. Um, but to be in that moment of finally being able to address the microaggression, of finally being able to speak to every Kate, you know, because that's what that character represents, every Karen who's ever been like, you're my spirit animal, or I call myself Shaniqua when I act like this, or who jokingly said, you know, Shaquana, and, or no, excuse me, I've been called um, Shanene jokingly by a teacher. Wow. And the, who's supposed to be my professor and mm -hmm. uh, uh, this uh, someone who's a guidance, you know, and having that being put on me. So being able to like really live in that moment was so freeing. <laughs> like I wish, I really wish with all of my heart that every Black woman could have that speech. And I pray that this uh, moment resonates with our white coworkers. And I've even had like an experience of seeing someone's comments on Facebook where this white woman says she had used ghetto in that way to her coworker. And it's now just realizing having some self-awareness and self-evaluation because of seeing that moment on screen. And that's mm -hmm. what, you know, we hope that uh, the work does is, is that it, it elicits responses and lessons and, and inspires change. And so mm -hmm. I hope that this happens with this moment as well. <laughs> you know, I thought Angie found her soulmate with the driver. Then she started oh. messing with, 
<laughs> with him with Eric and the musical, do you think she's capable of finding the one or do you think Eric is the one for her in some ways? I think Angie, just like her career, Angie's suffered a disappointment and may question if the love that she wants is actually there. And I think that's the reason why she settles for men in situations that are a little bit more convenient because to make yourself vulnerable and to create the space of actual real connection, I don't know if she believes she's deserving of that yet. Um, I think the same time she had the career blow, it did something to her spirit and, and, and caused her like to question what she's worthy of in regards to love. But there are moments where you see she wants it, you know? And so I think maybe in future seasons with some growth and some faith and some stretching, I think our girl will be able to like have a true heart to heart encounter. But I think right now she's having an encounters of convenience. <laughs> <that are> convenient. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my goodness. You know, Angie has like a, a really unique relationship with all the girls on the show. What yeah. has what was one of your favorite moments to film with the ladies or just your, you know, favorite relationship that you liked on the show? Yeah. My favorite relationship, hands down, is Angie and Quinn. I think they are such a beautiful yin and yang. They are such a, a wonderful millennial black odd couple. Mm -hmm. And I so enjoy seeing this rich girl who's not actually rich because it's her parents' money and this princess diva mm -hmm. who is living off of her and watching their exchanges. My favorite moment was with Grace when we were, um, it's the scene in episode, I believe, five where she's just coming from the the one night stand well oh have you seen you seen the whole yeah, season. I've seen the whole series, yeah. That's that. mm -hmm. so she's just coming from the one night stand and she's in the red dress and we're in her kitchen and I'm just coming from the nanny gig oh yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah and she's talking about you know her whole apprentice mm -hmm. um ship right now and learning how to be a hoe and mm -hmm. kind of finding out that the get out check is not quite what it thought what it, what I thought it would be excuse mm -hmm. me um, and we have this fun moment at the end where we just improvise because she's actually from the Cayman Islands. Mm -hmm. So Grace can drop that accent like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually started the idea of the accent because we were, it was a table read and I had mm -hmm. no idea that there was a Jamaican accent. And if you ask me to do an accent immediately, it mm -hmm. sounds crazy. <laughs> like I have to take a moment to think about it or else like I, I'll get him. I got in my head. And, but the accent was so horrific that it was funny. Mm. So I kind of leaned on that to make it this like kind of bad Jamaican accent and kind of make fun of the, this woman who thinks she's appropriating culture, mm -hmm. but actually doesn't even know and aware that somebody's like um, scamming or hustling her. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, Grace does this moment where she's like teaching me the accent and we just like rip for like a good, like 30 or 45 seconds. And it just speaks to how incredibly just quick Grace is and like how we just were so dropped into the moment and this chemistry is so beautiful to like work with people that you love mm -hmm. and we could just go. Like if you kept rolling, we would make a whole nother scene if you allowed us to and that was so wonderful too about having producers and writers and directors that welcome it mm -hmm. you know it's just a wonderful experience where everyone's safe and you can just play because I see that clip of you you and uh, Grace like online all the time now yeah <laughs> yeah and that was impro improv mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it was really fun and I just love those moments too where you get to really see the ladies just like take the character Mm -hmm. to a different direction or like surprise you yeah it's really cool. you know during the filming of Harlem was there a particular moment that stuck with you you know just filming in that you know scenery or just having that experience um the first moment that stands out to me the most is walking onto the set of Quinn's um apartment for the first time mm -hmm. it was the first time like we or I was on the set of our like our sound stage 
And I remember growing up how iconic the set design was for our sitcoms. Like I remember the colors in Martin's apartment. Mm -hmm. I remember the colors in fr the friend's apartment. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember Moesha's bedroom. I remember, you know, there's just like iconic sets. And so I walked into this penthouse apartment that was all purple. And I'm like, oh my God, people are going to try to design their homes around this. Like it felt bigger than me. It felt like a it felt like a culturally moving image image that I was just blessed to be a part of. Um, and so that's once that's the moment I realized how big the show was gonna be. <laughs> and I was like, oh damn, I gotta step it up because this set ain't playing no game. The set design alone <laughs> is saying in the awards. So I gotta bring it. Um, but yeah, it was just such a thrilling uh, moment too, as an actress to also know that this was a black set, you know, mm -hmm. black ran set that mm -hmm. had this quality and this budgeted and this rich. And I was just so, it was such an honor and privilege to work on in those spaces. Yeah. <laughs> uh, looking <laughs> back on this season, what advice would you give Angie on her career and love life? Ooh, um, in her career and in her love life, I think my, my advice is the same thing is to let go of those past disappointments. Don't allow them to determine what you think you're worthy of right now. Go for exactly what you want. I feel like there's a big part of the fear that of the past that's just like holding on to her. So if she could release that, I think she would just like rocket launch into her purpose <laughs> and into her boo thing. <laughs> if and when given a season two what are your plans you hope the writers or just um your character in general with Angie goes forward oh that's good um <laughs> you know I just want to see more of the beautiful imagery that we are already doing which is having all of this wonderful vast representation of black womanhood of black sisterhood i love that i'm on a show where not only are the four lead characters of the ensemble different shades and different sizes of black mm -hmm. women but the supporting characters get these beautiful moments as well and they're all black women as well mm -hmm. i mean that is some dope moments but we have like um, Whoopi Goldberg and Jasmine Guy, and I can't remember, I'm um, blanking on the, the actress's name, but the woman who plays Brittany, oh, she's oh hilarious yes. and beautiful and bright. And it's the same thing with Shauna, um, Shayla, excuse me, that has this <laughs> beautiful actress that has this like full arc and you don't usually see that. Mm -hmm. on television like if the leads are getting it they're greedy with the other moments you know so to be on a show where it's like every any type of black actress I feel like could have a, a wonderful moment to stand on and walk away from and then also be a representation in this world of a kind of black woman that we don't we aren't allowed to see all the time mm -hmm. that's all I just want to them to keep pushing to keep representing all of our cousins and our aunties and allow you know the rainbow that is melanin to uh, really be showcased I'm, I'm so grateful for it they're already doing a wonderful job of it yes for sure because I feel like right now we're in a time where like there's the four core black women you know we have insecure we have you know three runs of girlfriends we have you know so many more around the world so many more that are coming out even with your show what do you mm -hmm. think sets Harlem apart from these shows, but also embraces these Black women that we don't see on television yeah. like this? Yeah, well, first I want to say that I'm like in love that there's so much, so many of us right now on screen and there is Queen yes. having it. Well, you know, I just, mm -hmm. I've, I've always as a viewer thirsted for this, as a little girl thirsted to see this, to see myself on screen. And I really think that's also where Harlem stands out is that I've also never seen characters like these, like this on screen. In spite of like black women are not a monolith. We're all extremely different. Mm -hmm. And Angie specifically to me is a woman that I've always been asked to play. Even in my life, she's this woman who's always been a joke in mm -hmm. other people's lives or, or, or support to other, other roles. And now getting a chance to see her be a genuine human being who still has the comedic because she is joy, she is laughter, but we get to see her fears. We get to see her desires. And it's the same thing with Ty to see an open 
open and openly celebrated LGBT character who's also thriving in her life. It's unapologetic. I've never seen anyone like Jerry Johnson on screen before. Mm -hmm. So I really think that's where we separate in um, ourselves, but also I can be overwhelmed with sisterhood for the rest of my life on screen and it wouldn't be enough for how I was deprived for years before, <laughs> you know? So yeah. I think, yeah, I'm really excited for the wave that's happening and may it continue to open and, and diversify more. Can we get all the four black men shows? And the yes. Other- as well. I'm waiting for that. I know they have Johnson out right now, but I'm still waiting for more and more shows yeah, in the, exactly. with the with the black men just embracing yeah. that more. <laughs> we got a little more with bra, but I'm like, I want more bras. I want more. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Besides, you know, with the success of Harlem, are you doing anything else in the upcoming new year? Yes, I'm working on music. Um, I'm actually been shooting my music video the past couple of days that's directed by Megan Good, which I'm so thrilled <laughs> to just be doing my first TV show in, the, mm. in this capacity with this woman that I've admired all my life, who's this trailblazer in the industry. And not only that, but also helming magic behind the camera as well and so to have her like to be a part of this with her in my in the tv show and then Mm -hmm. now doing my first music project I'm so excited (laughs) and I wait to share and she is so dope um so yeah the song is called something about you Mm -hmm. and that'll be releasing in the new year as uh, we finish and wrap up this video. (laughs) Did you always know that you want to be an actress or some type in the entertainment field? Absolutely. My um, grandmother did Off Off Broadway and wrote since I was a child. She's wrote in plays and poems and sang to me home. Like that's every time I hear that song, I think of my grandmother from um, The Wiz. And so artistry was always surrounded in, in my home. It's honestly in my DNA. My great grandfather was in a band and played harmonica. And so it, it, it was likely, you know, for me to be in entertainment or some form of artistry and was always celebrated and supported in my home. And as a child, so I'm so grateful for that because most people do not get it. Most people are like, you know, you, you tell your parents you want to be an artist and they're like, get a real job. And my parent, my mom was like, let's move to California. So, <laughs> I was just like, it's a, a blessing to have that support system. And it definitely helped, uh, helped us steer me, keep me grounded. And I would say um, it was so beneficial in me, you know, re- reaching somewhat success because this is, you know, only more and more and more. I'm only 30. So <laughs> but, you know, that helped me reach this at, at all. My, my parents, my family, my mom, my sister are pivotal in, um, in, in my in being supportive and, and helping me, I guess, make the next steps forward. I lean on them a lot. Is there anything you want to say to all the Harlem fans, you know, that has been supporting you right now and just supporting the show? Yes. Um, I just want to tell them thank you so much for watching it. Thank you for telling your friends to watch it. I hear a lot of that, um, that a lot of it is from word of mouth. Mm-hmm. A lot of our stories um, being pushed forward or any um, story and and. Uh, TV show or body of work is it's dependent on the backs of the people who watch it, our audience. So I thank you so much and being so vocal in your support. And may you continue to tell your friends and put it on for Christmas and put it on in the background because it's one of those shows that definitely warms the heart that makes you laugh and gives you that, that medicine of joy that we so desperately need right now, mm-hmm. but also makes you think as well so you get the beauty of both as well as the beauty of all this melanin on your screen so (laughs) thank you for your support and please continue to blast it right now right now right now (laughs) (laughs) well thank you so much where is the buzz where is the buzz you said